This LOS is explain the effects of exchange rates on countries' international trade and capital flows. Exchange rates, international trade, and capital flows. Just as a family that spends more than it earns must borrow or sell assets to finance the excess, a country that imports more goods and services than it exports must borrow from foreigners or sell assets to foreigners to finance the trade deficit. Conversely, a country that exports more goods and services than it imports must invest the excess either by lending to foreigners or by buying assets from foreigners. Thus, a trade deficit must be exactly matched by an offsetting capital account surplus, and a trade surplus must be exactly matched by an offsetting capital account deficit. Okay, that's a, an important point. This implies that any factor that affects the trade balance must have an equal and opposite impact on the capital account and vice versa. To put this somewhat differently, the impact of exchange rates and other factors on the trade balance must be mirrored by their impact on capital flows. They cannot affect one without affecting the other. So again, the net effect of imports and exports affect a company's capital flows. So if there's a trade deficit, there has to be a current account surplus. And if there's a trade surplus, there's going to be a current account deficit. And using the national accounts relationship, we see the relationship between trade and expenditures, savings and taxes, and government spending. So again, this was from the macroeconomics. We had exports less imports, which is our trade surplus or deficit, equals savings less investment, plus the taxes less government spending, which is a fiscal surplus or deficit, okay? So the potential flow of capital in or out of a country is mitigated by changes in asset prices and exchange rates. So uh, with regards to this macroeconomic equation, although this identity provides a key link between real expenditure and saving decisions and the aggregate flow of financial assets into an, or out of a country, it does not tell us what type of financial assets will be exchanged or in what currency they will be denominated. All that can be said is that the asset prices and exchange rates at home and abroad must adjust so that all financial assets are willingly held by investors. If investors anticipate a significant change in an exchange rate, they will try to sell the currency that is expected to depreciate and buy the currency that is expected to appreciate. This implies an incipient, i.e. potential flow of capital from one country to the other, which must either be accompanied by a simultaneous shift in the trade balance or be discouraged by changes in asset prices and exchange rates. Because expenditure savings decisions and prices of goods change much more slowly than financial investment decisions and asset prices, most of the adjustment usually occurs within the financial markets. That is, asset prices and exchange rates adjust so that the potential flow of financial capital is mitigated and actual capital flows remain consistent with trade flows. In a fixed exchange rate regime, the central bank offsets the private capital flows in the process of maintaining the exchange rate peg, and the adjustment occurs in other asset prices, typically interest rates, until and unless the central bank is forced to allow the exchange rate to adjust. In a floating exchange rate regime, the main adjustment is often a rapid change in the exchange rate that dampens an investor's conviction that further movement will be forthcoming. Thus, capital flows, potential and actual, are the primary determinant of exchange rate movements in the short to intermediate term. Trade flows become increasingly important in the longer term as expenditure saving decisions and the prices of goods and services adjust. There are two theories on the exchange rate trade relationship. The first is the Marshall-Lerner theory, and the effectiveness of currency devaluations or depreciation on trade depends on the price sensitivities, that is, price elasticities, of the goods and services. If the goods and services are highly elastic, trade responds to devaluation or depreciation, improving the domestic economy. If the goods and services are inelastic, trade is less responsive to devaluation and depreciation. The second theory on exchange rate and trade relationship is the absorption approach. If there's a devaluation or depreciation, 
This change in the exchange rate must increase income relative to expenditures to improve the economy. This affects national income through the wealth effect, more savings, and buying financial assets from foreigners. So we'll just finish this LOS with three practice questions. The first one, a country with a trade deficit will most likely A, have an offsetting capital account surplus, B, save enough to fund its investment spending, or C, buy assets from foreigners to fund the imbalance. I think that one should be fairly easy. We saw that on the previous slide. The net effect of imports and exports affects a company, uh, country's capital flow. So a trade deficit is a current account surplus, and a trade surplus is a current account deficit. So clearly we can see A is correct. A country with a trade deficit will most likely have a capital account surplus. So a trade deficit must be exactly matched by an offsetting capital account surplus to fund the deficit. A capital account surplus reflects borrowing from foreigners, an increase in domestic liabilities, and or selling assets to foreigners, a decrease in domestic assets. A capital account surplus is often referred to as a capital inflow because the net effect is foreign investment in the domestic economy, okay? Another practice question, a large industrialized country has recently devalued its currency in an attempt to correct a persistent trade deficit. Which of the following domestic industries is most likely to benefit from the devaluation? A, luxury cars, B, branded prescription drugs, or C, restaurants and live entertainment venues? Okay, the correct answer on that is A, a devaluation of the domestic currency means domestic producers are cutting the price faced by their foreign customers. The impact of their unit sales and their revenue depends on the elasticity of demand. Expensive luxury goods exhibit high price elasticity. Hence, luxury car producers are likely to experience a sharp increase in sales and revenue due to the devaluation. And one last final practice question to finish this LOS. A country with persistent trade surplus is being pressured to let its currency appreciate. Which of the following best describes the adjustment that must occur if currency appreciation is to be effective in reducing the trade surplus? A. Domestic investment must decline relative to savings. B. Foreigners must increase investment relative to saving. Or C. Global capital flows must shift towards the domestic market. Okay, C is correct. If currency appreciation is to be, to be effective in reducing the trade surplus, global capital flows must shift towards the, uh, the domestic market. The trade surplus cannot decline unless the capital account deficit also declines. Regardless of the mix of assets bought and sold, foreigners must buy more assets from or sell fewer assets to the domestic issuers or investors. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.